Lock Talk Radio. All right, Hector, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, guy. You feeling good? Feeling good. It's almost Thanksgiving. Feeling healthy? Feeling healthy. Okay. Well, you know, in case you're not, Google's trying to solve a few medical issues, including Big D death. I don't know if you saw that. There was actually a Time magazine article, and it's one of those things where you see it on the cover of Time, and you're like, all right, who's the one that printed up the gag magazine? Right. You know, Google's can can Google solve that? It, o- it only spawned about a hundred other articles immediately. Of course, it's really? Google. <laughs> You know, when the well, Google talks, when, people listen. Right? And also, when Time writes it, you yeah. know that it's going to be all over the place. Yeah, but but it's one of those things that kind of kind of. You know what I thought of originally? Because if you remember, you remember uh, Howard Hughes. Right. I mean, Howard Hughes did some really crazy stuff, right? Remember the Spruce Goose and yeah, hiding up in the attic or whatever. Well, that was later on in his life. Yeah. But I mean, even some of the things like he built the world's largest cargo plane out of wood. Yeah. That was a real good idea. Yeah. And he was the only one that flew it. It flew about all of what? Ten seconds? It was a death trap. That's but, but basically what it was. But, <laughs> but you know, even after they, they landed that plane, he actually kept it in a, uh, a, a basically a weatherproof hangar for like years and years and years. Just it was like his In case his he toy. needed firewood or something. You know. It was crazy. I remember the Glomar Explorer when they went down to get the, the sub, but he didn't tell people that they were going to go uh, trying to hook a sub, a Soviet sub. He said that they were going to use it to start siphoning the, uh, uh, what do you call it, manganese nodules off right. the seafloor. Right. So, of course, you know what that did? That caused all of his competitors to start trying to figure out ways of siphoning the manganese nodules off the seafloor. So, well, millionaires with lots of money, you know. Well, he was a billionaire. He was really was the first billionaire, right? Let me get off the millionaire. Yeah, That's the, too B, small. the, 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 the big B, B guys. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and obviously some of the biggest are, you know, Larry Page and, and of right. course, uh, Sergey Brin right. from, from Google. I mean, they've, they've got a war chest of like $50 billion just rattle around in their pocket. And, you know, I can understand why guys that are young and have lots of money would want to live forever. I mean, and they're not the first people that have tried it, right? Yeah. Going back several thousand, three thousand, four thousand years, you know, I mean... Yeah, one of the first uh, the first Chinese emperor uh, tried tried it, you know, he tried to figure out how to do it. Ponce de Leon, you know, yeah. tried to find the Fountain of Youth right here in Florida. The, uh, the what's the story of Gilgamesh? It's yeah, Gilgamesh, about, right? About trying to live forever. Yeah, so it's not a new idea. Yeah. But, you know, the one thing that, that those those other guys didn't have was... Well, they didn't have the technology. The technology. They the medicine, they right. the they science we had. DNA, none of that stuff right. back then, you know? I mean, I be, I basically high tech was what? Alchemy. Yeah. Yeah, so let's. I tell you what. So before we get real heavy into the subject, why don't we give our listeners the uh, call-in numbers? So for those out there in the uh, cyber world, it's two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. That's two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. Of course, you can always find us on workinthewebthewind dot com, mm-hmm. wsquaredmediagroup dot com, clubwcube dot com, socialslamdunk dot com. We're running out of time, Hector. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and YouTube. Yeah, and we also want to... We're streaming to, live right now on YouTube. Right. And we also uh, want to thank our sponsors. Yeah. We are, our sponsors are VAE, a yeah. new way, the, the, the uh, e-cigarettes, and right. you can find their ad. In fact, there's a 50% off coupon on our, our website that and, you can get to. And that's a good way to live a little longer if yeah. you're smoking those old cigs. Right, <laughs> right. What we were talking about last last week, it was our, what the topic was the smartest right. guys in the room, right. and, and that was really something that hasn't been changed in several hundred years yeah. for cigarettes, so it's something that's brand new, and... Like I said, there are some health ramifications. A lot of people are giving some serious look right. into this. And, of course, Top King is another one of our sponsors. Top Kings and uh, Senior Tub. That's right. With the walk-in tubs. That's right. So check them out. They're on our website. And let's get back to our little show today. Because now, first of all, I, I don't know if you heard of uh, the way that this uh, new company has gotten off the ground. Because not only did, did they come up with the idea, but they've actually created a company for it. It's called Calico. Sounds like a cat company, right? As a matter of fact, if you do a search on Calico, you'll find things like toy laser guns and, <laughs> and all kinds of stuff from the 70s. Uh, and of course, lots of silly cat videos. Right. And cat videos from China, Japan. Is it Japan that all the cat videos are? Oh, the cat videos are everywhere, yeah. you know, because, uh, in fact, what was but it? I mean, the Calico videos on the little kitty cats that they have in China, Japan, or wherever it is. Um, but anyway, the first thing I did is when I looked at this, I said, you know, why would they want to do this? I'm, well, obviously, if you're young, you said earlier, right. it would be nice to live forever. But there was a really funny cartoon that I saw that it shows uh, him saying, you know, hey, we're going to help people live forever. I want you to really head up this division for me. And the girl says, well, I get this other job at this other place. And he says, but no, you're going to be able to really help and have a big impact on, on the world. She says, great, I'll, I'll take it. And what do we do after we finish this? He says, well, then you're going to sell them advertising. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I mean, you could, you know, you could make people live longer and they could spend more money That's on right, it. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, we've got the Google Blimp, too, right? Yeah. They're trying to get more people from Africa to start surfing the web. Right. So they figure if they can't afford satellites over there, we'll send a communications blimp up there. Yeah, Google's so big that, I mean, when I started doing research, I said, well, let me go back, because I've done this research before, yeah. but I said, let me go back and see how big Google is right now. Well, Google just exceeded... The size of Apple. So Apple's $233 billion, and now Google's right at around $250 billion. And when I went back to look at all the different properties, Google has more properties than God. I mean, if you look at it, it's got more stuff. Just, if, if you look at the major properties alone, Search, YouTube, Google+, Gmail, Picasa, uh, Google Display Network, Blogger, mm -hmm. Uh, Google Play, Google Store, Google Wallet, Google Ventures, Google Office, Google Drive, Google Voice, Snack. I mean, and that's just really a small piece of me for the guys out there who are watching it. I mean, there's something like, there's 29 search products alone. And I was naming them all over the place. So probably 300 different properties on the internet. And that's why they're worth $250 billion. Oh, yeah. And that's why he's worth $50 billion. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the thing is this, though. When you really look at it, a lot of the things that, that Google gets behind, okay, I mean, this for some people, like I said, it was like the giggle factor that came in with this thing, Google right. curing death. But right. but when you really look at it, because I actually did quite a lot of research on, on medical technology. There was technology. also some frown factors, too, when he mentioned the thing like, oh, curing cancer, that's not a big deal. And you know, people start freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but actually... And I understand what he was saying from a geek point of view. Yeah, yeah. Statistically, you know, right. it only well, extends... But the th point, is, though, is that what, what is good for this particular research, which is to, to figure out a way to basically reprogram our chromosomes, because right. that's, that's the only real reason that you die, right. is that as your... Because basically it all comes down to it's mitosis, only. cell division. Right. And the more times the cell divide, after a while, you start getting copiers. They're actually built in. It's like pre-programmed yeah, into the gene. Right. right. So after a while... They, they, they stop producing properly, and that's why as you age, your bones get brittle and your skin gets wrinkled and all the other things that come along with aging. It isn't Basically, the mechanisms don't work as good as you get older. Yeah, it's like the old Star Trek, you know, yeah. the self-destruct mechanism. Right. Right. <laughs> we have built-in self-destruct mechanisms. As a matter of fact, I saw an alien, a show on Alien that said that what they did was, they, when they first built us, they made us live too long. Right. So they went in there and re-engineered us so that we would only last about 70 or 80 years. So it's a programming <laughs> problem, okay? And Google's very good at programming, right? You know, but the funny thing is, is <laughs> there is one type of cell that lives forever. Do you know what it is? A cancer cell. That's right. <laughs> In fact, that's what happens. If you turn the switch off. They become malignant, right. It becomes malignant, and then it starts to propagate, you know, wantonly. And that's why cancers start metastasizing well, parts it, of the it body. wouldn't be so bad if the cancer cell didn't go crazy, because that's the problem. It's not only that it lives forever, yeah. or it doesn't want to die, it starts doing its own thing. Mm-hmm. And in many cases, they actually detach and move around and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So if they could figure out what cancer cells are doing just to stay turned on, that would be cool because that would be very useful. But they also need to figure out how to stop them from mutating into whatever the heck That's they right. want to mutate so into. So the bottom line is this. The type of research that they're going to have to do will actually benefit cancer. Right. I saw some patients. really cool articles where it has to. one of the things that they were doing is they have a, a special application that they've developed that they have only used in-house either personally, mm -hmm. he's used it personally, or a few researchers within Google. And what it does is it can, it can aggregate the computing power of literally hundreds, if not thousands of computers, right. and then spit out answers within milliseconds. So they can actually genetically map genomes and stuff like that, where something would normally take 10 minutes to give you an answer, but it spits it out in like seconds. Oh, yeah, well, and, and genetic technology, I mean, it has come a long way because... You know, when you go back just a few years to, to map a genome, it was, you know, it cost billions of dollars. And, and now there are companies out there that will do it for you for a few hundred bucks. You know, so as the technology grows, we're, we're starting to learn how to program the body. And face it, too, we, when we did one of our shows not too long ago, The Building of the Bionic Man, remember that? Yeah. We were talking about all of the artificial uh, organs that are now being produced. I think they said two-thirds of the human body can now be reproduced right. artificially. Well, uh, when I saw this, I, I said, you know, why would Google really want to be involved in this? Well, Google gets involved in things that they can make money with. That's right. And the medical research is, is big bucks. Right. I was going to say, the reality is, if you can 
do anything to help people live longer and last longer. Right. They're going to spend money on it like it's going on. So it's like wool jumping on the sheep. They're going to go for it. <laughs> I mean, it's just that simple. I mean, look how much money is spent by women and men today to stay looking younger yeah. and to live longer and to feel healthier and to, and to get the Viagra and all the other crazy stuff that people are doing so they can live longer. Mm -hmm. They want to stay young. I heard a guy say the other day, hey, 60s is the new 40. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And that's what people, that's the attitude that people have. So, again, if you could tap into that, it's like buying banks or whatever. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, that's the way I look at it. You know, well, even when we're talking about the artificial body parts, you know, some people are up in arms about that. It's like, well, I mean, have you ever heard of hip replacements? Have you ever heard of yeah, people, heart transplants? People have been I mean, buying body parts for yeah. a while. Right, and the thing is now... They can actually print them. Have you seen that? 3D printing now. They can print organs. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we um, when we did our printing show, the 3D printing yeah. show, there were several amputees that had actually made their own prosthetic limbs. Yeah. And, and they were not just like a fake hand. It was like an articulating hand that yeah. was controlled by a computer. Well, you know what the hardest thing to, to reproduce in these organs are? The blood vessels. And I'm talking about at you know the smallest scale, not like the you know the veins or anything, but the like capillaries. The capillaries. Right. And, and you know what they use to make those? I have no idea. But sugar. Sugar. Because what they do is they encapsulate the sugar, and then by running liquid through it, when it's done, it's it really dissolves the sugar. So then you've got all these capillaries. In right. fact, there was actually there's a, a show on, on PBS right now called Futurescape, and they actually, on one of the episodes, in fact, I got it right here, they were showing yeah. you how they actually print there's a, there's a liver. human organs. Yeah. They can print livers. I need one of those. <laughs> Probably make a good sale down at the local bar, right? The watering hole, right? Hey, you need a liver? We got well, one. you know, and that was one of the things that they have not been able to reproduce artificially. So, you know, other than printing them. I mean, you can't, they have not been able to produce a robotic liver, for want of a better word. Well, Kidneys they can do. And what's amazing, liver is the most regenerative organ in the human body. I mean, it, you, you literally, you can cut three-fourths of it away, and if you were real healthy, it would grow back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, it, I mean, it's the most resilient organ in the human body, mm -hmm. but... Trying to make something that can regrow itself, that's pretty cool. They could do that. So. Yeah, but what's good is now if you can't, they can they, they can, can make you an artificial. They can print you one. Now, <laughs> the question is, will your body reject it? Because it's not your gen... I mean, imagine if they copied it genetically, it would be really cool. Well, like I said, I, this, one, this particular show didn't go into that much detail, but I'm sure if you researched it, you could find out. And again, it's, it, they're always raising the bar on, on the technology, so... You know, they've been doing stem cell research and a lot of other things where... Because the thing is, if you can use your own stem cells, then you don't have any rejection problems. I mean, when I, again, when I go back to Google and I look at this, I say, you know, if Google's doing something, mm -hmm. I don't care how stupid it sounds, you really sort of have to pay attention because they have enough money that they can throw against something that no matter what, it's going to stick against the wall. Well, you know what they say, when billionaires talk, people listen. Right. You know, because I don't know if you saw this one, because I actually had this in my uh, blog, but about the Russian billionaire. Yeah who's building his own avatar, because it's been predicted by the year 2045, they're going to be able to literally take your consciousness right. and Transference. transfer it into, you know, a robot. Right. So he's already building one. Yeah, I mean, I looked at the different kinds of cures that people think of. I mean, I'm a pretty health-conscious person. Yeah. I'm really big in supplements. Sure. I believe in exercise and all that kind of stuff. I look pretty good for my age. I'm almost 60, so doing these things can make a big difference, mm -hmm. but... When I looked at the different ways you can improve your life, I mean, obviously, nutrition, lifestyle, medicines, biomechanics, genetics, cryonics, which people don't really think of that that much. Uh, and then well, cryonics is, is basically used by people that are, have a condition that can't right. be cured right now because what they'll do is they can freeze part or even all of your body. Right. Life extension. And by, then hopefully down the road, they'll be able to thaw you back out and fix you. Right. The, the, the two that really have totally untested are cryonics and transference. Mm -hmm. Transference doesn't exist. Yeah. And cryonics, nobody's really thawing anybody out well, to check them out. I mean, until, until recently, they couldn't even, like if you had an artificial limb, it couldn't even communicate directly with the nervous system, but they've cracked that. Right. So they're getting closer to the sucker. Right. You know, and of course, the other thing that they're doing is they're, they're creating organisms that have more and more artificial intelligence. In fact, I picked up one here about uh, Google where they created a artificially intelligent computer and they put it online and started letting it go out and look at videos and photos and things and like it, that. And that's the one they immediately went out. And started looking at the cat, cat. the funny cat videos. Yeah. Well, I like the cat videos. <laughs> well, you know, we've always been worried that if we get these artificially intelligent life forms, particularly computers, that they'll take over the world. Well, they're going to be, he's going to be wild because, you know, you know how many well, stupid cat videos there are? So, 
It's still an infant one. That's but it could, be sitting, it could be sucking up cat videos for a long time. So we're going to keep it busy. It might move over to dog videos, and then you got to start thinking. Wait well, they've minute. already tried game shows. You know, remember <laughs> Watson? Right. Was the one that was the Jeopardy champion. Actually beat human Jeopardy champions at Jeopardy. Well, it also beat a lot of chess champions. Well, that was, that was, um, it was, well, I keep thinking Big Blue. Big Blue is IBM, but it was, right. it was another one called Something Blue. That was their, that was their chess computer. But the thing with Watson was, is it not only could it play the game, but it could talk. I mean, it could relate to you. It could, it could literally, you could ask it a question, and it could relate to what that question really means. And the only way that they did that was by actually creating uh, a virtual Jeopardy game where they had contestants that would come in. And, and at first, when it did it, it would give really dumb answers. In fact, they, they, they were kind of, the guys that were programmed were kind of upset because the MC was making fun of <laughs> Watson for a long time, but after a while, it learned. I mean, it really learned, right. and that was the one thing that they'd never been able to crack before was machine learning. Right. And then once they got done with Watson, what they did was they started putting out that particular code so that it was an open source code so people could go get it and use it, and actually, he's become a doctor now. He's working in the medical profession. Maybe he can work with the guys at Google. It's I don't like know. It's like that Star Trek doctor. It is. They just you know, have the hologram. Yeah, the virtual doctor. Virtual but virtual. literally, they're using him for diagnostics. Because there are so many different variants out there when you're trying to diag, like, you know, you've seen House. Right. You know, where you've got all this room full of, well, a lot of times the, the, the doctors don't have that kind of time or latitude where they can spend a lot of time trying to diagnose these really arcane diseases, but a computer can look at, you know, 100 million outcomes just like that. So they've actually turned him into Dr. Watson. He's being used in medical I research. I know when I worked for the Army, one of the things we were experimenting with was, uh, with, remote medicine right. was coming up with algorithms that the doctors or the not the doctors but the field medics could use right to try and quickly diagnose problems with sure. people because well, and that we was don't even, have that many doctors well now is even telesurgery you know you can have a doctor on one side of the world operating on somebody on the other side of the world and you put the little robot there and the robot does yeah <laughs> i mean the, the the technology the medical technology as i said has been growing by leaps mm -hmm. and bounds and that's why we're living longer yeah. because if you go back you know, a couple hundred years to our founding fathers, the average lifespan was like 35. Right. You know, when you were when you were 30, you know, you were over the hill. <laughs> and there were, I mean, going back a long time, people did live relatively long lives, but the reality is a lot of people died from infections. I mean, infections killed most people. Disease. Up until about 1920. Sure. Because around 1930s, when they started figuring out how to come up with antibiotics, antibiotics and stuff right. like that. Which, of course, now we're overusing, so we're right. creating stronger bugs. Right. So that was the first big jump, but then we started coming out with biomechanics and, and all kinds of other really cool stuff. Chemistry has gone a long way. Uh, I think one of the things that, uh, another thing is that these computers will be able to do is help the pharmaceutical companies come out with better, better drugs, better chemistry drugs. Because one of the problems that they have is the side effects that you get from drugs. Oh, yeah. So if they can come up with better computer models that can figure out how those drugs would interact, before they ever try and really launch them on people, they'll be uh, far more ahead of the game. And they can actually concentrate on things that they're not doing right now. Because for the most part, pharmaceutical companies look for drugs that can solve symptoms. Right. Cure symptoms. Not diseases, cure symptoms. And now, with these types of things in genetics, they'll be able to go over and cure diseases instead of going after the symptoms. And that'll be a cool thing. Did you read about my Methuselah mice? The yeah. And I knew about them, actually. And the funny thing about that whole study is there have been many studies. That, there was not just the mice study, but right. there have been many, many studies on many different kinds of animals that show that if uh, calorie reduction can definitely add length to your life. And that includes human studies, right. which, which have been done. It's not going to double our lives right. or anything like that. But generally, people who eat less live about 10 years longer. You know, so... The hard thing is, it's just this Thanksgiving coming up, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to eat a little bit less, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, if people can knock down 25% of their calories, they would generally feel better and they would live longer. Because one of the things that kills most people is eating too much. Of course. Especially in this country. Yeah. You know, we, we got upsized everything. Is, yeah, exactly. Supersize me. Yeah, we, we invented supersizing, you know, so... When you go to Europe, this supersizing doesn't exist. No, have you ever seen an ice cream cone over in Europe? It's yeah, it's well, tiny, tiny thing. So it's like, what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs>
Again, and then the guy says, that'll be five euros. <laughs> yeah. Again, in America, most people really don't understand that we have a blessing, an overabundance, wow. and part of that overabundance is killing us. You know, but here's maybe some overabundance in billions that might really come back and save some people. Yeah, you know, the thing, too, of course, over here is, is not so much just the amount that we eat, but what we eat. Yeah, yeah, we got sugar up to yin-yang, we got everything's cheap. <laughs> well, and even the way that the, a lot of the, if you're buying the packaged foods on the right. supermarket, you know, with all kinds of additives. And right. Well, they've got all the things that extend the shelf life. So if you buy an Oreo today, for right. example, it's not the same Oreo no. that they were making 30 years right. ago. No. Same way with Coca-Cola and a whole bunch of other things. I mean, they use high fructose corn syrup instead mm -hmm. of sugar. You know, so a lot of those things are causing issues. Right. But I mean, even if you had perfect nutrition, right. and you know, there's a lot of ways of finding better nutrition today. Even if you had the cure for most of our major diseases, we still can't live forever. Yeah, they, they actually estimate that we would normally live to be about 120, 130 years old if we had no major accidents, mm -hmm. we didn't catch mm -hmm. any major diseases, we yeah. lived a good, healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, on. The, the only way to get beyond that, like I said, is to literally reprogram the, the, the genes. Right. You'd have to get down to the molecular level. And, and, and if they could... One of the things I read about, and this is not to do with this show, but I read about it about a year ago. They're trying to figure out a way to extend the telomerases so that, yeah. so that if you've got more of them, right. the cells can reproduce longer and, mm -hmm. and replace themselves. And barring no you know, gamma radiation or something that yeah. causes them to mutate, you'll be fine. Yeah. But the bottom line is if you really want to cure it, you've got to get down to the molecular level. Right. And that's, there's, there's no substitute for that. Because right. like basically you've got a built-in self-destruct mechanism and that yeah. is programmed at the molecular level. I'm telling you, when I saw that alien video, I was, yeah. like, I was laughing. I said, you know, if you look at the actual chemistry of human beings, that makes a lot of sense. But I don't know. I wasn't around when they were making it. So <laughs> I think it's sort of funny. Um, I would like to say that, if again, if people do certain things, they would normally live longer. So, for example, here's my short list of things that I try to live by. I don't try and engage in risky things. I mean, unfortunately, when I was younger, I did a lot, but now I don't. No bungee I, jumping anymore? I don't do bungee jumping. I don't, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I quit both of those things. And I tell people that if you do smoke, use e-cigarettes right. because they're a hell of a lot healthier. I mean, I wish I had them for my dad. Um, I eat organic food as much as I can. Mm. Uh, I don't try and eat too much. I don't try and eat to stupor. You know, right. A lot of people like to do they eat till they fall asleep. Yeah. Um, I try and get lots of sleep, but that's a really important thing. I try and get regular exercise two or three times a week. I try and meditate, which is a hard thing for me. And then I take supplements religiously every day. And I, those are the things that I do to try and extend my life. I know that when I talk to my doctor, he tells me that a lot of, like my skin is probably 10 years younger than my age would right. normally be. So. I think some of my stuff is working. I hope that all of it is working. Well, you, you know, the thing is, though, I, I kind of look beyond this because, again, anything that man puts his mind to, we've pretty much been able to accomplish. You know, we can't reach out and get to the stars yet. We can see planets around them now. Right. And we've certainly come and gone from the moon a few times. You know, so if we really want to do this, we can. But the thing that most people don't look at is should we? Right. Because here's the problem. If we can't get off this planet, if we can't find another place to inhabit so we can spread the population out, if all of a sudden you had a population that didn't die... Or, and, and, and they didn't stop reproducing. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> what would happen is, guess what? We would eat yeah. this entire planet right. very quickly. In a very short period of time, we'd be... I mean, we're bumping up against that already with 7 billion, you know, it's going to be 8 billion before you know it. And we're going to reach a certain tipping point where you just literally can't produce enough food to feed everybody that's down here. Yeah. And that's usually what starts big wars. Yeah. And, but there's also yeah. some other things. I mean, again, you can have natural catastrophes that can knock out large segments of the population. And that's happened on Earth to animals multiple times. We worry about asteroids and all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I know we could populate several of the planets that we have. We could populate the moon with not too much trouble. Uh, we could populate Mars with not too much trouble. So if we had the technology to do all this stuff to make us live longer, I'm pretty sure we could populate those two planets. And we could have 20 billion people in our solar system, if you will. <laughs> but the, the trick pick what would be getting the food. You know, you got to grow food on Mars. Good luck with that. you got to grow food on the moon. I mean, how do you do that, right? That's technology we don't have. But again, they hook you know, two or 3,000 computers together. They can come up with some ideas, I think. I mean, yeah, you know, what, you know what the computers will say? 
Watch Get rid of the people. I say, watch the cat. <laughs> we can do a better job. Get I, the heck out of here. Uh, you've been to Disney World. When you go through like the, the, the pavilion that they have, how they grow food there, they have the hydroponics and all right. that kind of stuff. They've tested doing a lot of stuff in space, and they can do it. So there's no reason why we couldn't do those kinds of things. But again, it... Well, you got some other bigger problems, because, you know, if you want to talk about Mars, we can do a whole episode on that. But your biggest problem with Mars is it doesn't have an atmosphere like we have. I so have to make one. I have to do a shake and bake. We don't know how to do that yet. We can't terraform yet. So, yeah. <laughs> shake and bake or find some aliens underground or something like that. What was that movie called? The, the Total movie? Recall. Total Recall. That's it. Yeah, Total Recall. Um, I think we got about four minutes left. So I want to make sure we uh, tell our uh, viewers or, well, viewers and yeah, listeners yeah, now. You can say that now. About our, our sponsors. Again, we got Tub King, who has got the greatest. Right now, they're having specials on uh, several of their models. Uh, so they're oh, oh, hot tub? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And they have, <laughs> yeah. And they have the new models coming in in, in 2014. Um, also, uh, East, uh, buy EE6. Mm -hmm. Again, it, this is to me, if you're smoking and you, and you really want to smoke, that's a great alternative because, again, you eliminate about probably 400 toxins that you would normally get from a regular cigarette. But you still could get the pleasure of the nicotine and so on. Um, and I think that's something, since we're talking about health here, this, that would be a really good thing to do. You want to tell them about next week's show? Yeah, uh, well, you know, we're getting close to Christmas. So mm -hmm. to uh, paraphrase a, a little Christmas uh, rhyme, "Twas the bite before Christmas, we're going we're gonna to talk about a lot of the, the really hot, cool toys that are out. You know, and we're talking tech toys here. Yeah. And also who's been naughty and who's been nice online this year. So it should be a pretty lively show. And uh, the following weeks after that, we'll be doing our prediction shows for year end, which we'll be talking about what's happening and what's going to be happening in 2014 mm -hmm. in search and so on, and also on social media. So those will be pretty exciting shows. Yeah, because again, you know, if you get a jump ahead of the competition, that's, that's you know, gives you an advantage. Yeah. And that's what we're all about with working the web to win. So, again, I always tell people, you know, Google says anything. You really need to pay, pay attention, attention to it because, yeah. again, they own so many things mm -hmm. that they can directly affect your life. And these are kind of, I mean, people are worried about Obamacare and all that kind of stuff. But to me, this could have a much bigger impact on our lives. Yeah, and one thing you can, you can count on with Google, they yeah. know how to make a computer program that runs. Right, yeah. <laughs> Not like the government's health care program that does it. Right. $650 yeah. million dollars later, they, they and that doesn't work. They follow through. They, they, do, know. they do real follow through. And the guy that they put in the top of that corporation mm -hmm. is a real go-getter. I mean, he's really passionate about this particular subject. So I see that going pretty well, he was far. also the guy that came up with Genentech, so I yeah. mean, he's got the, you know. He's got the genetic background right. and all that kind of stuff. So this guy is a player. I mean, he's also did some stuff with Apple and so on. Um, speaking of Apple and, and maybe even Facebook, I know that in Europe they had this big contest, uh, and I saw it on the web, where several of these companies got together to put together different things mm -hmm. to help come up with different kinds of cures for cancer. And right. they came up with some ideas. And they're actually utilizing some of those now, and they seem to be working on some people. So Right. Well, you know, the whole premise behind Calico was simply this. You've got a lot of, because there's a lot of medical technology companies out there, because right. it's a huge business. But most of them are, are, are looking at the, the pieces of the puzzle. You know, they're looking at the small pieces. They're looking at one particular right. disease they're not looking at the or one big particular picture. condition. So what they wanted to do with Calico was to kind of step back a little bit and look at the big picture, but as a result, they're going to end up working with a lot of these little pieces anyway, but they can look at what's already been done and pull a lot of the, the technology that's on the shelf into the fight. And if Google lives up to its normal reputation, if they share a lot of this information with a lot of these other companies, it could be not only an exponential growth right. in the knowledge of medical science, yeah. it could be it could shoot through the roof. Right. And even if they don't get their ultimate goal to be able to cure death, they might be able to find some other cures for other diseases, which I, wouldn't I be a bad I, I after think, effect. I think what they'll normally do is within 15 or 20 years, we'll find that they've extended life by 10 or 20 years for the average person. So instead of them living mm -hmm. to be 70 or 80, they'll be 80 to 90 or sure. 100 will be normal. And you'll have a much higher level of functionality. So... I know we got about 30 seconds left. Um, I, that's all I have for today's show. Yeah, you know, have a healthy, happy uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll be back next week keeping the web to win. Yeah.